Hi everyone, my name is Paige. I'm a lifestyle photographer based in Paris, France. And today I wanna to help you make decisions about how to expose your film for the look that you want. We're gonna talk about exposing for the highlights versus exposing for the shadows and what effect doing one or the other is gonna have on your final image so that you can make the choices that are best for you. I've got a comparison for you today and if that's something you're interested in, keep watching to find out more. shot this roll of film, I had two shots that I took back to back of the same subject, same composition, same lighting. And then one of them I had exposed for the highlights and then the other one I had exposed for the shadows. And then in the scanning process, the lab normalized the exposures. So they now look like they have the same exposure, but you can see in the detail, which I'll show you in a second, that I shot them differently. So I wanna show you what those differences are and to talk a little bit about why it happens so that you can make some informed choices when you're exposing your own film. There's no particular right or wrong way to do this. Some people like the look better of one than the other. That's totally fine. Photography is an art as much as it is a science, of course. And ultimately the goal is just to know as much as you can so that you're doing things on purpose. So without further ado, let's get my computer. Computer is open. We've got our hard drive just precariously uh, balanced. What I've got right now is I have three pictures up on my screen for you. Two of them are those photos I just mentioned where I took them back to back. You can see the composition is nearly identical. The chairs here are a little bit whiter. Those whites are brighter. Um, they're a little bit more muted here. The colors are a little bit different as well, but we'll get into that. But generally they look about accurately exposed, like a pretty standard middle of the line exposure, both of them. And then over here on the left, what I have is the exposure sheet that the lab gave to me. They will just do basically a contact sheet for you, but a digital one. And if you're not familiar with the contact sheet, traditionally in darkroom printing, it's the first thing you do once you've developed your film, just kind of see what your photos might look like. So I can see how I expose the photos. You can see I underexposed a lot on this roll, but the photos I wanna look at, these two, they're these two right here. So let's zoom in there. All right, so I've rotated it so we can look at them right side up. So as you can see, the first picture is it looks very overexposed in this, and the second one actually looks more correctly exposed. So what's happening is the first one I exposed for the shadows. Basically what that means is when you're exposing for the shadows, you're pointing your meter or the meter in your camera if it's doing a thing called spot metering um, at the shadows and making those the sort of midpoint of your photo and exposing for those. The highlights get very, very light if there's a lot of you know, tonal contrast in your image. Versus in this second one, I exposed for the highlights, which means I was pointing it at the tops of one of these chairs, which is the brightest part of the image. So that is the correctly exposed part. And then the effect that, that has on the rest of the image, of course, is if there's, again, a lot of tonal contrast, the shadows will be much darker. So you overall have a, have a more underexposed looking image. Um, whereas when you're exposing for the shadows, you're kind of pushing it on the side of overexposed when you're looking at the full thing. So this top one in the negative, if this were a digital image, you might look at this and think, oh my God, I totally messed this up. I've blown all the highlights, it looks terrible. And the second one, you probably go like, okay, this, this looks about right. Spoiler alert, you have not blown all the highlights if you expose like this top one. I have a video on that actually that I posted a little while ago, so I'll link it somewhere up here and you can check it out about how um, exposing is different for film and digital. Let's now take a look at the results of this. So this super bright one right here is this photo right here. So as you can see, it went from being extremely white to pretty normal, like the colors look good. Because I exposed for the shadows, you're getting a lot of detail in the shadow here and here. So if we click to zoom in there, you've got all the texture in the tile here and over here as well. You really see every little, you know, tiny fissure in the rock and stuff. So that's Kind of a big point of exposing for the shadows is making sure you don't lose shadow detail in film because that is where you tend to lose detail when you shoot film. On the other hand, the parts of this negative that looked totally white um, have been pretty much recovered. You can see in these highlights over here, there's, I mean, of, of course, there's a depth of field thing happening, so it's blurry, but you can see that there's detail in all of these houses. Um, you can see this tiny line right here. That's the edge of the ocean. Um, and I should say, I haven't touched these scans at all. This is as sent to me by the lab. Of course, the lab is doing their own development, which is why these two photos look 
so similar exposure wise um, and their colors look pretty similar too and that is thanks to working with a good lab who has that as a goal. Now let's look at the one that was a lot darker and that looked more correctly exposed, again from a digital standpoint, in that negative where I was exposing for the highlights. So exposing for probably the tops of those chairs. So this image, let's look at the shadow detail first of all between the two. Whoop, here we go. So as a reminder, the left is the one that was exposed for the shadows, so the lighter image, and the right is the one that was exposed for the highlights, so it's a darker image, okay? So as you can see in this darker one, we just don't have the same amount of detail that we have in the one that I shot lighter. If that's a goal, and often it is a goal, especially if you're shooting people in like backlit situations or something, um, where you know generally someone's face is darker than the sky if the sun is behind them, um, definitely something you want to keep in mind when you're shooting film. Uh, so that's the first big thing. The next thing I want to point out here is the amount of grain that you can see in the image. So if you look at kind of this spot down here on those chairs, um, in that image that was exposed darker, there's just a lot more texture happening. It's a lot of film grain versus on the lighter image, it is still there, but it's a little bit less pronounced. It's less obvious when you look at it. Some people really like that grainy look, including me often. So if that's something that you're going for, this is a way that you can bring it out. Another way you can bring it out is pushing film. And then the third thing is just the slight color shifts that are happening. And again, I haven't touched these. I could go in and, you know, adjust these blues to look more like these blues or vice versa. You can mess with that in post and kind of make them more equal if that's your goal. But off the bat, you often get film that kind of looks like this. You might notice with the lighter image, the colors are punchier, they're brighter, there's sort of more contrast happening, especially in the highlights. If you look sort of back here again at that ocean area, it's just got a little bit more of a kick to it. It's a little bit more saturated also than this other side where it's a little bit washed out. There's kind of more of a yellowy, hazy overtone to it. That is something that often happens when you underexpose film. And you see the same thing happening more dramatically in the foreground. So if you look at the chairs here and the color of the chair, the color of the tile on the overexposed photo, it's sort of brighter. There's more contrast between that sort of yellowy color of the chair and the tiles versus that almost pinky highlight color of the backs of the chairs. Whereas on the underexposed image, those colors are kind of all converging together. So there's a lot less color contrast happening there. Those sort of yellowy tones that were almost leaning towards green in the lighter image with those tiles and the, and the chair seats have gone kind of orange in the underexposed photo. And the tops of the chairs themselves, which are sort of almost pink in the lighter image, have also taken on a little bit of a yellow tone to them. The exact tone shift that will happen when you underexpose film uh, will depend on the emulsion of the film itself. So that's something to be aware of if this is an effect you're going for. Underexposed parts of your image will tend towards either this kind of like yellowy, almost orangey vintage looking effect, or they'll go sort of like a muted green. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is just kind of overall effect. On the image that I underexpose, when the lab in this case is scanning my photo, they've had to pull up the exposure quite a bit. And what that does is it takes the parts where there's been detail lost and it makes it brighter, but it means that we kind of have smushed blacks, if you will, and smushed shadows. So that's contributing to our reduced mid-tone contrast here and to this overall sort of muted effect. It's a little bit less saturated. There's a little bit less of an obvious bright, bright highlight and you know dark shadow. Everything is kind of tending towards something more in the middle. And it looks, I would say, a little bit more like what we think of as a, as a vintage style film look. Um, if you're familiar with Visco, this is kind of more the style that Visco tends to imitate as well. If that's the effect that you're going for, this is how you achieve it with film. And if what you're going for is something more, you know, bright, vivid, airy, then you probably want to stay on the lighter side. So yeah, there's no one right way to expose your film, to develop your film, to scan it. You know, there is a science behind it, of course, and you're always working with the film that you have and the technology that you have. But at the end of the day, what's most important is to kind of know what it'll do and then to play with it and have fun and get the effect that you like. Um, so I hope that this was helpful to you. I would love to know in the comments which of these images you like better. If you do want to, you know, do this experiment, it's an easy one to do. Take two photos, um, 
expose one for the shadows, expose one for the highlights, send them off to a developer and see what you get. And uh, I would love to know what you like better on your own photos too. So thank you so much. Go ahead and like this video if it was helpful to you. I hope it was. Um, and if you're interested in more content about photography, I would love if you would give me a follow and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye. <laughs> Today I wanna help you make good decisions. <laughs> that was too long, let's try again. My cheeks hurt. Smiling too much. <laughs> okay, I think that was good enough. <laughs> <laughs>